Iron Man made his debut in 2008. When I saw it for the first time a few years later, it felt like our DJ was personally inviting us to this cool, quirky party. The MCU was this accessible portal to comic book universes, even for people who hadn't spent their childhoods staring at comic book panels. It captured the spirit of those adventures, the big action scenes, the moral dilemmas, all sprinkled with enough humor to make even the most outlandish plotlines feel somehow relatable. Back then, DC was, well, being DC. And the MCU swooped in with its interconnected stories like an epic comic book crossover come to life. We got to know these characters, saw them grow and change, and cheered them on as they assembled to face bigger and badder threats. But somewhere around the time Phase Whatever started feeling like Phase Groundhog Day, things changed. The once fresh formula started to feel, well, formulaic. Predictable plots, repetitive character arcs, and CGI spectacles that felt more like a checkbox on the summer blockbuster list than a genuine thrill ride. Focusing on identity politics didn't help either. It seemed more like ticking boxes than genuine character development, turning a lot of viewers off and failing to connect with others. The stories that used to burst with heart and humor became bogged down by the need to pander to a very loud minority of people. Even the critical acclaim started to crumble, with the first real signs showing in the Eternals. I mean, their trusty critics, the ones they've tried to pander to for years, suddenly weren't that impressed. Lukewarm to bad reviews pointed out poor storytelling, weak character arcs, and an overuse of tired tropes and one-liners. These critics were once eager to hand out glowing reviews at literally everything that had the Marvel brand. They've now started to grumble. The magic, it seemed, had faded. The movies were still making money, of course, but the cultural impact, the buzz, the must-see event feeling? Not quite the same. But as usual, the critics were missing the point on why these movies were failing. that will be the greatest challenge to all his powers. This is the most explosive adventure ever faced by the world's most amazing superhero. Kevin Feige's 2018 declaration of a female majority, MCU, felt less like a victory lap and more like a screeching handbrake to many fans. The love for these heroes never really depended on their chromosomes. We cheered for Iron Man and Black Widow with equal passion. Yes, we had preferences, but the characters resonated because they were well-crafted, not gender trophies. But Disney, with its penchant for injecting identity politics into every franchise, saw fit to make gender the central narrative in the MCU after Endgame. And it clashed with a very noticeable dip in quality. Storytelling became platforms, characters transformed into mouthpieces for agendas rather than compelling individuals. And then the MCU was born. Female Iron Man, Captain America's even a Hawkeye. Yes, we know these characters weren't MCU inventions. They existed in the comics, but their unpopularity actually mirrored their on-screen reception, and that's because they weren't written to entertain. They were ink-wielding battering rams for ideologies. But the MCU's current approach to female representation isn't just creatively bankrupt, it's harmful to the women they claim to represent. They reduce them to one-dimensional vessels for predetermined messages, absolutely robbing them of the agency and complexity that defines good characters, male or female. And it's puzzling to me how they can't see how it reinforces harmful stereotypes by suggesting women need gender-swapped versions of established male heroes to find their own narrative footing. How about the MCU focus on maybe creating original, nuanced female characters who stand on their own merits, not as rehashed versions of their male counterparts? I mean, wouldn't this be a true victory for representation, not the hollow tokenism currently masquerading as progress? Baby, the scarab better make a deal, Captain America. In a few minutes, we'll be too late to save this mission. Tell me where she is. The MCU's explosive success wasn't just born from blind leaps of faith. It was a meticulously executed plan built on a logical foundation, and that foundation was undeniably male. In the beginning, the franchise prioritized established comic titans like Captain America, Thor, Iron Man, and Hulk, titans who had already conquered hearts and wallets in print. This wasn't mere pandering, it was economic pragmatism. 
these characters carried proven track records, their popularity always translated to a readily engaged audience. Female superheroes historically haven't enjoyed the same readership as their male counterparts, particularly among the predominantly male comic book demographic. Action films, too, have traditionally catered to a male audience, and superhero movies have always been an extension of that genre. I get this call for more female heroes, but the MCU is actually now filled with heroes that are basically just checkboxed entries for diversity quotas. They're not good characters in their own right. This trope of female Iron Man just reeks of uninspired copy-pasting, an insult to both the creative potential of female heroes and the intelligence of the fans. And we all know there's a simple reason for this. It's the same reason we finally got a Black Widow movie over a decade after we first saw her in the franchise. There's this idea that trends swing back and forth like a pendulum. It's pretty much the key to understanding why Hollywood's making a lot of bad movies. Basically, the pendulum loves swinging between extremes, pushing stuff way too far in one direction, then reeling it back the other. And right now, it's affecting both the flood of movies that feel totally phoned in and the whole shove politics down your throat thing. Back when Marvel started, their main goal was winning everyone over. They stuck to safe bets and well-known heroes. Sure, it kind of sucked that there weren't many female superheroes, but back then, making money was all that mattered, and rightly so. Now fast forward to a culture increasingly attuned to diversity and representation. The pendulum swung, and Disney, eager to rectify what they thought were past oversights, started this mission to address and tackle the quote-unquote gender imbalance. This is where the pendulum problem comes back out. This pursuit of overrepresentation tipped the scales created narratives driven almost purely by ideology rather than storytelling. That's probably why some recent Marvel movies haven't exactly set the box office on fire. People can spot forced feeling stories a mile away. They want characters they can connect with, not lectures about gender wars disguised as superhero fight scenes. Those movies that feel like they're just checking a box without giving the characters any real depth or making them feel natural in the story, yeah, not exactly winning anyone over, even if they were meant to. And when people point out this stuff's not working, instead of getting defensive and calling everyone sexist, maybe the studios should just, you know, listen? Blaming sexism is like throwing glitter at the problem. It doesn't actually fix anything, it just makes a mess. The girls, where are they? In a room under number two stack. They're, they're all right. <laughs> Marvel's stumble into cringe-worthy girl power shows was not a surprise. The cultural winds were already howling in that direction, making it a crash landing waiting to happen. Ironheart's production hell is actually proof of this, a show destined to be forgotten as soon as it hits our screens. Echo's fate was sealed before it even began, and Ms. Marvel barely escaped the wreckage. And then there's She-Hulk, the queen of cringe, a statue of all their mistakes, mistakes they didn't learn a thing from. These shows were shiny MCU wrappers around empty candy bars. The female leads felt like cardboard cutouts, not real people, and their biggest superpower was just existing in the MCU. Loki started out promising, then became a laugh fest where Sylvie, who was basically a way better Loki, did all the hard work. Men in these shows exist to make the women look amazing. Even the good guys were stuck with cartoonish womanly traits to hide their emptiness. The women were portrayed as flawless superheroes with zero flaws. The challenges they did have were just bumps on the road they barely noticed. Their victories came easy as pie, no sweat, no tears. Compare that to Vi from Arcane, who fought tooth and nail, crying and failing her way to attain some power. Her victories feel real because she earned them. We've seen shows like The Crown prove you can do strong female characters in the modern era without turning men into doormats. You don't need to choose. You can have both good guys and good girls, with all their messy human bits included. They proved you don't need to trash the men or use dumb stereotypes to tell a great story about women. Instead of shattering glass ceilings, Hollywood keeps building an army of emotionally sterile Amazons who wouldn't know vulnerability if it punched them in the face. Where are the cracks in these so-called strong female characters? They fight like gladiators, never crack under pressure, and navigate complex situations with the serenity of a meditating monk. But they never falter, never doubt, never make the kind of human mistakes that make characters relatable. They're action figures, not people. Compassion and empathy are now toxic traits reserved for the male side of the aisle. In a marvel, 
in its misguided crusade for equality, has painted this absurd picture where men are punished for the very emotions they deem acceptable for women. They really took a feminism crash course on Twitter and mistook online vitriol for nuanced representation. Men now reduced to one-dimensional punching bags for the female fury, while women are robbed of the emotional spectrum that makes them human. And we, the audience, are left with a stale narrative where everyone's predictable and no one grows. The sad thing is, their attempt at empowering women has created a sterile vacuum where nuance literally goes to die. I want you to remember something when you get out of jail, pal. The old people around here are my friends. And if I ever hear they have problems again, I'm coming after you. You got that? Hollywood has a long history of crafting women who just defy every stereotype in the book, but never lose the essence of what it means to be a woman. Sarah Connor was a fighter, Ellen Ripley a survivor. These women transcended the label of damsel in distress and redefined female action heroes. And yes, I'm aware they've also become cliches in any discussion about strong female characters, but they're still the ultimate examples. But now we're drowning in Hollywood heroines whose biggest superpower is triggering Twitter wars. All we get are lectures on intersectionality from space princesses with zero personality. But gender only matters when it drives the story, not when it replaces it. Marvel, and Hollywood in general, has been swayed by a very specific brand of feminism that often falls into the trap of reducing female characters to symbols of a political agenda. Gender becomes the defining characteristic, eclipsing individual nuances and internal struggles. This sucks the life out of stories. And when characters exist solely to push an agenda, their arcs become predictable, their agency compromised, the narrative stops being a tapestry woven from diverse threads and instead shrinks to a one-note sermon. It stops being art, and audiences are getting fed up. Being bludgeoned over the head with agendas, however noble their aims, causes indifference and cynicism amongst audiences. Every movie becomes suspect, every message tinged with manipulation. The magic of storytelling dissolves replaced by a weary awareness of the strings being pulled. Captain Marvel became their stereotypical feminist icon and completely alienated a portion of the audience with her poorly developed character and inconsistent motivations. Instead of engaging with legitimate concerns about her flaws as a character, the studios resorted to accusations of sexism, weaponizing a crucial social movement as a shield against accountability. You can't make that up and they've done it countless times with almost every show they made with a female lead. But now the sexism card is losing its shine. Audiences aren't buying it anymore. The guise of progress, meticulously crafted through token representation and superficial messaging, is cracking. They want real people, heroes and villains with actual emotions, not walking, talking manifestos. Instead of blaming audiences for disliking poorly written characters, why not listen to their concerns? Maybe. Beneath what they perceive as negativity lies a wealth of insight, a roadmap to crafting stories that resonate on a deeper level, but that requires humility, introspection, and a willingness to admit that formulaic, agenda-driven characters just don't cut it anymore. But Marvel knows the ball is in their court. But I'm pretty sure they will keep betting on cheap stereotypes and empty symbolism. Only he could defeat a superhuman madman. I got a fella called the Red Skull heading up their outfit. Matt Salinger as the Marvel Comics hero. Captain America. Now, this isn't a call to bash girl power shows. Believe it or not, it's just a plea for better. I think fans deserve stories that challenge harmful gender dynamics, not reinforce them. The MCU and superhero media in general has that potential. Remember that audiences aren't monolithic and don't need to be won over through calculated representation. It would be better to let compelling stories dictate who leads the charge, not quotas or box checking exercises. The pendulum doesn't have to break. It can swing gracefully, finding balance between audience desires and genuine social consciousness. <laughs>